Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Simply D, and we are here for episode one entitled, Who Am I? Or better yet, Who Are You? A lot of persons that I meet, I ask the question, you know, who are you? Tell me a little bit about yourself. It so happens that when I do this, persons tend to tell me, I'm so-and-so, I work at such and such a place, you know, I'm a part of this organization, I've been doing this for many years. And, you know, they give this whole spiel about, you know, what they do, how they do it, when they do it, but they have yet to tell me, who are they? You know, it's important to know who you are. For me, if you were to say, hey, D, who are you? You would say, well, I'm a young, free, educated, liberated woman. That's it. It's no complications, no long story, none of that. It's very simple. Um, That's just my personality. That's just my character. That's just who I am. And I'm forever changing. And I will be forever evolving as long as I'm on this earth. And I, I tend to start by saying to a lot of persons that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Okay. And so... As we evolve, there are going to be things that we like. There'll be things that we don't like. There'll be things that, you know, we want to be defined as things that we don't even want to be mentioned in about five or 10 years as we grow. You understand what I'm saying? So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a backstory because I know for a lot of persons too, that they hide behind their jobs. They hide behind their status and never truly live their authentic lives. And for me, it's always been a struggle for me to understand why persons don't. But then I had to have a come to Jesus humble moment and remember that I didn't always start off where I'm at. So I want to take you back in the day, like how DeAndre grew up and then come to present day where I'm at now with Simply D. So you can understand that I'm just like all of you. And I'm just trying to figure this thing called life out each and every day. And once again, I'm constantly evolving and just being the best version of myself every single day. So growing up in my household, academics were like the thing, okay? If you weren't making like straight A's or straight A's and B's, then ain't nothing really was happening for you. And unfortunately, your girl just wasn't on that spectrum. Your girl was more like you know, like B minus, C plus in that area, in that bracket, okay? And I'm I'm not ashamed to say that. I can say that now. But back then, woo-wee, it was kind of hard to grow up in that household. And with my family, they firmly believe that academics is and are the keys to success. Once you have a great education, you can go off to school and get a great job, get a great job, get a great house, have a good family, you know, live the great lifestyle. And then there was me who was just like, okay, well, I just don't see life going to the school. Maybe if I try something else, you know, it is what it is. Um, So my cousins, those went off to Vanderbilt, one went to Yale, one went to Harvard, and then there was just me, D. So right about the time... I would say I was about to graduate in 2005. And, you know, you start to apply for colleges about the year prior, six months prior before leaving. So I was fascinated with the movie The Incredibles. And I used to doodle a lot. I won't tell no word a lie. I used to doodle a lot. Journaling and doodling are two things that I still do to this day. And as you know, I, I got better at it. Like Pikachu was like one of the first things I drew. Um, and I had a few other artworks that I had around the house, but you know, no one took it serious. So I took it serious one day and I applied to the Art Institute of Atlanta and I applied and your girl got in. And so I was so ecstatic to explain to my family like, hey, yo, I got into the Art Institute of Atlanta for graphic design and animation. Now, I'm so ecstatic because I finally found something that I like to do, something that I'm very passionate about and something I feel like it's worthwhile. And at the end of the day, I would make, you know, a good, decent amount of money and I would be very happy with it. However, my family didn't think so because it wasn't in the brackets of being a doctor, being a lawyer, you know, working in the bank or something of the the sort. They were just like, you know, that's that's just not it. That's just not the wave. That's just not what we do. 
And if you decide that this is what you're going to do, then you got to figure out how to pay for it. And secondly, we're going to get you a coloring book and you can go and doodle that way. But we are not going to exhaust your college fund on art. That's something you can do as a hobby, but not something that you can do as a profession. And that broke me. That broke me at an early stage because like that was something that I was passionate about. I finally found something that I was good at, something that I love to do. And here it is. I was told no, pretty much. And for a while, I spiraled. I really spiraled out of control, trying to find my way um, back and forth in life, like what it is that I want to do now. And I had a few odd jobs here and there um, that I did. And I even took my family up because, oh, I didn't mention, forgot to mention, they wanted me to be a nurse. Before my inception of coming to this earth, it was deemed that DeAndra was born to be a nurse and that she was going to take over the family business and that that is just going to be her path. Everybody else can do what they want to do, but DeAndra, no, she is going to take over the family business. And I just hated to bust their bubble, but I just really didn't want to do it. And before I left Atlanta and I came back to Nassau, I applied to AMC and I applied to ATC, which is Atlanta Technical College and Atlanta Metropolitan College. And I got into both for the nursing program, but I declined. Um, I just said that it, it just it wasn't for me. It wasn't in the deck of cards. I do not like the sight of blood. <laughs> I love people. I love them dearly. But I just there's certain things that I just cannot do. And blood is one of them. So that was just like a, it was a moment. It was, it, it was, it was a moment. And I won't go into detail. I would tell you by the book because I really break down, break down like how I went through that tunnel. Um, It's entitled The Transparency of My Heart and it's available on Amazon. Check it out. And uh, after that, I came back to Nassau and I, I kind of like bounced around trying to find my way for a while. Um, And then in 2009, I got into telemarketing. And telemarketing, you know, you really have to be skilled for that. It's not something that you can just jump into and say, hey, I can just pick up the phone. I can tell these people one, two, two, three, and then boom, I'm going to have a sale. No, that didn't, that didn't, that didn't, that didn't quite go that way. For me, it was a, it was a high moment, low moment, low moment, low moment. I need to move on. So one week I made like $700, no lie. One week I made like $700. The next week I made like $10. Following week I made like $30. And then I saw like this was a consistent pattern of me just not not working at this particular job. So, you know, I said, you know, God, there got to be something else in the deck of cards because this ain't working for me. And at the time, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I still had no passion for anything, I'll be honest. So my uncle was working on this sporting event back in 20 around that time 2010 2011 and he invited me to jump on board with that and so I did that and once I did that I realized like I really like planning I really like event planning and from there up until now well sort of kind of now I still love event planning and I went and I got certified in it and you know it's been a passion of mine and it's still a passion of mine well one of my passions because I've realized like I have so many passions and talking to you guys is one of them um so I want to say that what if I had given up back then what if I had just said you know that's it I I think that that's it for me after my grandparents have shut me down and said that you know because you don't want to do art, I mean, because you don't want to be a um, a doctor or a lawyer or do anything that, you know, society would uphold, then maybe, just maybe, you know, you should just call it quits, Steve, and just fizzle out and just do what they want you to do and call it a day. What if I had done that? Simply D wouldn't be here today. I really wouldn't be here today. But I had a lot of other experiences that brought me to this point as well. And we will delve deeper into those as we go along throughout the series. But I just wanted to to tie this all in to say, know who you are. Know where you're going. 
And remember that whatever society based um, life on and success on doesn't have to be your reality. Your reality of success is whatever makes you happy. And I don't mean on the surface happy. I mean internally happy. And I mean eternally happy. Like forever and ever and ever. You got to find what makes you you, what makes you happy, what makes you the best version of yourself, and what makes you want to show up each and every day. Okay? So that's it. That's all. That's my little moment for the day. Who am I? And I want your guys' feedback. So please do leave a comment below and let me know. Or if you have anything that you want to share and talk about, I'm open to um, listen. Until next week, take care. I love you. And just remember, you're worth it. Take care.